So in this video, I'll be talking about product analysis and talking about why we analyze products um, to help us in our own design work. So um, one of the reasons we might start by um, uh, conducting product analysis is if we've been given some sort of design problem or design context to work from, and we might be just interested to see what is on the market uh, at the moment, which perhaps solves the problem or helps to solve the problem. If we look at these products, we can then um, assess them, evaluate them or analyse them ourselves and basically work out if there are any, any issues within the, the current design that we can improve upon. Okay, This is kind of like empirical design. So uh, it's something that, uh, for example, James Dyson done. He looked at the existing Hoovers where they had, or uh, vacuum cleaners, I should say, that had the traditional bag. And he believed that there was ways to improve this by uh, introducing his new cyclonic technology and creating the bagless vacuums that we see. And, and you know, as such, he's, he's become very successful as a designer and the, the Dyson is now becoming synonymous with the name of, a, you know, a vacuum cleaner. If we, if we think of vacuum cleaners nowadays, we often think of a Dyson being the model. Um, other reasons why you might conduct product analysis might be in a more uh, real time or, or needs basis. So we might be producing a product and we simply need to analyse the sizes of a product to get us an idea. So uh, one of my students at the moment is working on um, a prototype for a product that has a handle so um, you might physically find another product that has a handle that's particularly ergonomic for example and take measurements or, or um, uh, dimensions from that so that you can make your handle as ergonomic or, or again improve upon what's already there Another example is if you're making a product and you need the measurements of certain parts that go with it. So if you was perhaps producing a, a design for a pencil case or a desk tidy or something like this, you're going to need to know how long uh, a pencil is or perhaps the diameter of a pen or a pencil or a pair of scissors. So we might again conduct product analysis for these reasons. So there's, there's lots of reasons why we might analyse products to get us um, a bit of extra information about when we're designing and when we're making our own products. Now on this page you can see um, one of my students has been looking at some, some products that are already available. Okay, Now this is this is secondary product analysis. It's it's quite good, so it's, it's useful to see what's on the market um, and to get some ideas and you can kind of get some assumption as to what, what is good and bad, but generally speaking, it's always better to analyse products from primary sources and if possible, even disassemble products. Okay, So you might have um, experienced, we were talking about uh, Dyson before sort of thing, you might have been used the, the Dyson box in your school where you get the chance to actually take apart products and you can get a real understanding of how parts go together and the, the real purpose for, for how the product works and obviously a better way to analyse the product. But this is one way of doing it. We can look on the internet and we can see that our products are available. Now what I ask of my students is to basically come up with an evaluation of the key points, whether it's positive or negative about the product. In this case, these, these products are obviously linked to the, the the chosen context or the design brief that they're working on. So um, a, a nice nice tip for the examiner or for the moderator, I suppose, is to do a bit of colour coding here, perhaps put a, a key on the, the, the page here so it's clear what are the positive and negative features, okay? But really, how do we evaluate? I mean, what, what we need to work out, I suppose, is before we evaluate, what we're going to evaluate on. Um, I've talked about this in the um, the previous video, but we talked about Access FM. So Access FM is that list of points, aesthetics, cost, consumer, environment, safety size, function and materials, okay, and perhaps ergonomics as well if we're talking about function, okay. Um, so all of these points, we can talk about how good the product is in, in these respects. So we can think about the aesthetics and we can think about what, what does the product look like, is there a reason it's, it looks in that way, um, what are the colours, what is the texture, what are the materials are being used, and we can ascertain whether those, those things are suitable or whether we can improve them. And we can literally go down the list, cost, consumer, environment, so on and so forth, addressing the fact that whether the, the, the product does it in the best way possible, specifically for our design problem and for our chosen consumer or market group as well. Okay, So we can go down and we can get a really good understanding of what's good and bad about the product. Okay, It's very important, obviously, as well, that you justify what you're saying in your evaluations. So it's very simple just to, to denote the, the features of a product. So I can look at this product and say it's a chain, it's it's made of silver, it's silver in colour, you know, there's there's chain links, okay? But that doesn't really tell me anything. I'm not being evaluative there. I need to justify what I'm saying. So it's silver in colour, what does that denote? Does it know 
Does it denote value? Does it denote quality? Do I think there's, you know, a luxury item by looking at this colour? Um, is the silver um, a particularly good material in terms of its antibacterial qualities or um, the ability, the fact that it doesn't corrode when it's um, when it's placed in a, a wet environment or it's, it's in, in contact with the humidity or the, the moisture on our skin? Okay, so we're evaluating and we're giving justifications rather than just saying it's good for this and it's bad for this. Okay, now you can also get helped along in obviously in our modern world lots of people uh, add their own reviews on websites so there's nothing wrong with obviously going onto the likes of amazon and getting people's own reviews and you know blending these in with your own uh, comments as well providing you don't just literally cut and paste and again i've talked about plagiarism in the past you know not just using these as your own comments okay so we can combine our own reviews with the reviews of others uh, on the internet or even you know uh, consumer reviews or our friends to get um, points from there but we should always reference if we're going to use sort of hyperlinks either to the images there or hyperlinks to other people's reviews of the product such as you know you can you can get quite easily get the specifications from products from amazon as well which will give you sizes and prices and all this sort of stuff okay so that in a nutshell is why we uh, analyze products and also some uh, tips as to how you analyze but again what i've said here i've only talking about secondary sources and i would strongly recommend that you also disassemble products and, you know, I really like it when when students take videos of them disassembling products or videos of them actually using the products, because this really highlights in a real uh, sense the how good the product is and how well it actually functions. OK, you might have heard of a term called uh, body storming. OK, and this is a this is a, a design method where you go through the process uh, as you would with the problem uh, in place and you come up with ideas because you can really get a sense of what the problem is if you physically have it in your hands or you physically go through the process.